Welcome to the Last Christian Radio Show with your hosts, Brother J.D. Williams and Brother T.L. Farley. It's now time to grab your Bible as prophecy brings into focus the events playing out on the world stage at incredible speed, right before our very eyes, and exactly as was foretold. Well, good evening to everybody for the Saturday edition of the Last Christian Radio Show. My name is J.D. Williams, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Terry Farley out there in uh, North Central Texas. How you doing there? (laughs) How How you doing tonight, Terry? Doing good, Joel. Thank you. Yeah, he's talking about the Dallas area. We've been joking about that. <clears throat> but I, I can't get by without throwing Dallas in there somewhere. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> but it's getting hot out here in Texas. I want to tell you, and it's only May. Yeah, it's only May. That's the scary part. It's only May because we know what the weather is here uh, in Texas in the summertime. You know, last night I went to um, my grandson's baseball game. Had a great time. Uh, uh, I'll just throw them in. They won 13-4. to four. They're in first place in their division. So, anyway, <laughs> had a great time there. But, uh, you know, I've, I also found out how old I am, Terry, because we had, to, we had to park like 300 yards from where the game was, and I was about, I was about spent. <laughs> just, just, just trying to get to the game, you know. But, yeah. um, anyway, we, we, got some, we got some interesting stuff today, and, and I'm hoping – that you can tie some scripture into this stuff. And I know I'm putting pressure on you here at the last possible second because we really didn't uh, discuss this too much before um, we, we got on the air. But, um, and by the way, Terry, just to let you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of feedback from you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm coming through your, uh, I think I'm coming through your speaker system out there uh, again. Um, anyway, uh the the first thing that that I want to talk about uh, is Jeff Bezos. Now you know he owns Amazon. Yes, I, I that's know right. he. I know uh, he he owns Amazon. I'm not sure he owns one of the other major papers, but he's been a huge Biden supporter. I mean, huge. Oh, wow. Okay, well those days appear to be over. Look it at took that. Him a while. Look at this. The newly created disinformation board should review this tweet, or maybe they need to form a new non secular board instead. Raising corporate taxes is fine to discuss. Taming inflation is critical to discuss. Mushing them together is just misdirection. He aimed that directly at Biden. Good. <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, it's it's almost unbelievable, but uh, they have now nailed that as that he has lost Bezos, as in Biden has lost Bezos, and that would be something big, I think. Yeah, um, Bezos is, um, Bezos is uh, something else, and uh, he's a force to be reckoned with. It's huge. Um, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's one of the elephants in the room. And right. <laughs> no no offense, Mr. Bezos. <laughs> right. Well, I, I don't think I don't think he would take that as offensive at all. I mean he's uh, yeah. uh you know he's I mean one of the I, big guys. I, I I deal with Amazon all the time. You know, I love yeah. Amazon. I I really do. I order a lot of stuff. You know where I live, Terry. You've been here. Okay, you've got to have it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I have to. I I have to have Amazon. I mean, if we didn't, we don't have. We have one. Count them. One fast food restaurant in in this entire town, and that's a Sonic. And Sonic yeah. is so popular, they had to put up a a, a stoplight. Okay, but that's <laughs> it. That's it. I'm, and by the way, that's one of our two stoplights here. But uh, yeah. you know, uh, anyway. I love Amazon. Then the one thing that Bezos has done is he's kind of stayed non-political as far as uh, Amazon yes. goes. Yes. But uh, now, I think he's got a newspaper, and it's not so non-political. It's like over-the-top liberal, right? Yeah. So I, I'm not sure how we can tie Bezos into Scripture, 
you know, or uh, I know we can tie Biden into scripture. I mean, I, I did a podcast on it, you know, Biden's Biden's political role, because, you know, I believe that um, I, I believe that both President Trump and President Biden served a purpose uh, in God's plan. I think uh, President Trump's purpose was to move the embassy uh, to Jerusalem. Amen. To, to strengthen ties uh, with Israel. You noticed our economy really went way up when we started blessing Israel. Did you notice that? It sure did. Yeah. Uh, now, Biden's role, I think, is to weaken America and to make it to where um, prophecy comes true in the area of no country comes to the aid of Israel. It would certainly appear that way. Uh, that's that's the sad part. The, the only way we can rejoice is to say it is, in fact, a fulfillment of prophecy. Uh, there are too many things happening today, converging on top of each other, uh, to think anything else. Um, you know, if you you read the Bible today and the bar prophecy, it's like reading the newspaper. And, Absolutely, uh, you're just amazed. You're Absolutely. just amazed at what's taking place. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know, I believe it was early this week that um, President Biden said that he was going to cut off more of the uh, oil uh, that was uh, coming out of Alaska, for instance, and. Um, uh, I think even even here, maybe in Texas. But uh, one thing that that I did see today is is this. Uh, I want you to listen now to to this one. Well, I think it's a good thing, but it's really uh, not going to affect gasoline prices for over a year. The Biden administration is making available 144,000 acres of land, which sounds like a lot. But the industry really wants five times that amount of land to drill on. And the second thing is, is that the government is increasing the royalties from 12 and a half percent to 18 and three quarters percent, basically wanting a piece of the action, which increases the cost of drilling. And by the Biden okay. administration. OK, so what I was getting at there is that. Early in the week, he cuts off. He cuts off more oil distribution coming in, which, of course, makes the price of oil go up for us. And that translates into me and you paying more money every time we go to fill up our car. That's and right. Yeah. Now, now he's come out with the thing of where, OK, I'm going to allow drilling. It makes it sound like he's really doing something, but he's only giving them one fifth of what they need. And the results of that one fifth effort, we're not even going to feel it for a year. But he's going to be able to use it as a campaign issue. And on top of that, he's making money on what little he's allowing to be involved with. You right. know, that he's raising the, you know, it's just terrible. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, and again, I think this plays into prophecy. And absolutely. You know, uh, the, the great spoil in Israel is oil and gas. Yeah. The great competitor to Russia in regard to oil and gas is Israel. And yeah. the way that you eliminate the competition is you take out the competition when you're Russia. <clears throat> you know, Russia will take out the comp. They won't hesitate to take out the competition. And no. now this leads me to another point, because I think we're getting closer to this. I think we're getting closer to this. And, and this is this is new. OK, this is new. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think it I think it all ties in. And then we'll start talking some scripture here. OK, so. Yeah. Listen to this. Finland's President Soli Niinistö told Russian President Vladimir Putin in a phone call on Saturday that the country plans to apply for NATO membership in the next few days. In a release, Niinistö's office said that he had stressed how Russian demands late last year aiming at preventing countries from joining NATO had altered the security environment of Finland. The conversation was direct and straightforward, and it was conducted without aggravations, Niinistö said in a statement. Avoiding tensions was considered important. 
The Kremlin's press service said in a statement that Putin responded that Finland's abandonment of its traditional policy of military neutrality would be an error since there are no threats to Finland's security. Okay, so now, if you remember, Russia has already told Finland and at least one other country, I can't even recall what name it was now. I believe it's Sweden. Yes, yeah, you're, you're correct, it was Sweden. Um, that if they joined NATO, that there would be severe consequences. Okay, so now Finland has said, you know, well, we're going to do it anyway. And I, I think that this, uh, it, it just increases tensions. And if you've noticed in the United States, the Democrats, which are so anti-war, we had one senator already, he, he just said it out loud. We're at war with Russia. I mean, if that's where we're going, if that's where we're going, we do not have time to, to mess around protecting somebody if we're already at war now, do we? Yeah, yeah, they're, you know, and, and going back to the thing about uh, whether or not Democrat or Republican, you know, you've got the hawks and the doves, uh, and you've got them in both sides of the, the aisle. Um, but the truth is, what we've been seeing, uh, for the most part, with the Democrats is uh, if you go one way, they're going to go the other. And uh, you just, you can't figure them out. They're just... It, and and that's their game is they don't want to be figured out. They want to always be in opposition to whatever anyone else is saying. Um, and, and they're allowing things to take place uh, just across the board uh, that are um, just just phenomenal. Um, I, you know, but going back to the Sweden and, and Finland thing, um, I've actually read reports where Russia, Everyone was expecting Russia to get all upset about this. And although they've commented on it, uh, they're really not having the visceral uh, reaction that uh, they have had in the past when that discussion uh, has been broached. Uh, they, uh, they're they actually kind of, uh, all things considered, uh, much more mild in their response than they were uh, than they would have been uh, 10 years ago or whatever. Well, maybe. Um, I, I'm not so sure because when it comes to NATO, you know that there is an agreement in, in existence that says, you know, if you, if you attack one NATO country, it's just like you attacked every one of them. And there is... There is that uh, provision that says that we must immediately join in. And, and that provision is there, uh, and it has been so poorly honored um, over the years. Um, I simply don't trust NATO at all anymore. Me um, well, I mean, you know, you, <laughs> they're, they're just hand in hand with with the, the Democrats. Uh, they have been with Obama. With, the only one they didn't like was uh, Trump who made them start paying up all of the billions in, uh, that they owe. And they started paying it up. And if he had remained, uh, in, you know, in office, and we don't need to go there. But anyway. Right. Well, the, the thing is, though, is that um, with, with NATO, that the, the provision that we will back up, um, that, that we will go and back up anybody that gets attacked. That's never really been tested. You know, it came close to being tested back when you think about uh, Berlin and the, the airlifts and all that stuff uh, way, 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 way back. But that's really about the only time it's been tested. And, and, and you know what? I have to jump in on this, Joel. Uh, there's so little that has been said or reported about Afghanistan. Uh, we right. still have Americans in Afghanistan trying to get out. Uh, that's a crying shame. It's it, it's it's just terrible that 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 any of that would have happened. Um, you know, I, I just amazed that the Uber media uh, has let that sleeping dog uh, continue. Right. I, I totally I totally agree. But, uh, you know, we've got we, we put together these uh, the, these last few things here. And really what I want to do at this point is I want to get into 
how you think that this might tie in to uh, to prophecy and to biblical scripture, whatever. If you've got something, I would love to hear it because you know I know that Israel is going to stand alone, and I'm, I'm looking at everything that goes on right now in the country. And I'm thinking we are at probably our weakest point in national history. And if anybody was going to want to do something, this is the time. And I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking that we've kind of taken ourselves off of the world stage and that there's no reason to see us back on it. And I think that that provides the opportunity for things from... Uh, Isaiah 17 and Ezekiel 38 to begin to come to pass, or am I off base on that? No, ab- absolutely not. Uh, the the uh, dressing is being prepared, um, and and in in all of these areas, you can read them, and it's like again, like I said, reading the newspaper. Uh, when you see the the things uh, taking place and falling, especially going on to. Uh, Russia getting uh, their ho- uh, hooks put in their jaw by God himself and dragged down to Israel. That's not something that they're going to be able to gainsay. But going back to your, we had talked about this before the show started, and um, I had been ruminating on that in reference to everything we're talking about. And rather than to go into detail on those, I'd rather turn to the scriptures. and And I'd like to remind myself and you, uh, Lord, and anyone who happens to be in a place of influence in this world, any of those people out there listening who are close to God are in the closest uh, possible influence for this world. Uh, and the thing that I think we need to begin to pray for is for the enlightenment that comes from the Word of God. Uh, and I thought of sp- especially Psalm thirty-seven twenty-three. Uh, it says, we are told, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he, God, delighteth in that man's way. Now, I've paraphrased it uh, so that we have a clear picture of it. It reads, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. If you break it down again, uh, you would understand that what God is doing here is he's not dealing with the issues that we find so terribly important Uh, and consuming our attention uh, all the time, he's rather going for the heart and going for the spiritual reality that he is seeking and giving it to the person who is truly seeking what God wants, that this man, if he is following God, if he is into his Bible and studying what God wants and praying and waiting on the Lord, because the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit actually prays for us when we do not know what to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes. So we can pray whatever prayers we have, but we can be confident that even as we pray these things, the Holy Spirit is the one who's really doing this. That's where the 23rd Psalm, uh, amazingly enough, uh, is linked into uh, Psalm 37. 23. Uh, I don't think any of these numbers, I I think uh, the understanding of God goes deeper than anything we can understand. But the 23rd Psalm highlights the man who delights in the Lord, the man who truly follows the Lord, uh, the man who believes that God is in control and, and he is the shepherd and he's the one who feeds us. He's the one who guides us. He's the one who leads us uh, through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, this was a, a verse that was um, written on the helmets of the guys in Vietnam. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Of course, they added their own ter- interpretations to that. Uh, but the point is, we know where they got that verse. Um, and so we go back to the fact, any of these people that are in these tremendous positions of power, if they actually turn to God, uh, that he will order their steps. He'll order their decisions. We don't know what the time is. Certainly, uh, everything appears to be taking shape uh, as the uh, pr- prophecies uh, of the end of the world uh, are falling upon us, uh, converging upon us um, exponentially, just one after the other and on top of each other. Uh, But at the same time, 
uh, we understand that regardless of where we are, uh, that the Lord is in control and that if we are following his word and his orders, even in the midst of chaos, he will order our steps. He will lead us. Uh, and the reason he'll do it is because it says he delights in our way when we follow him. Can you imagine delighting God? What a wonderful thought. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, you, you, you kind of, you know, I mentioned about my grandkid last night. Well, sure. before, before we went to the game, we had dinner and uh, Chandler said, you know, we, well, we need to pray for my team to win. And I said, well, uh, honestly, Chandler, God doesn't care who wins your game tonight. I mean, uh, you can pray that all of your team plays to the very best of their ability, and you can play. You can pray that everybody uh, plays the game uh, without any incident of injury or something like that. But you're a Christian, Chandler. I understand that. But there's Christians on the Eagles too. So you know, uh, God's not going to pick sides. He doesn't care who wins your game, but He does care about you as a Christian and he does care about you as a person and he cares about all the other team too and uh, you know I kind of use it as, as a as a learning moment teaching moment sure to yeah. let let him know that you know this this all this stuff's real really 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 temporary and you need to you know you need to focus on what's really important I, I just I just I just thought I'd throw that out there real quick so yeah. um, anyway um, you know, Terry, all all that that, that, that you spoke of was one hundred percent right. The thing is, is that we are so focused on this show on finding that last individual to accept Christ uh, before the rapture of the church. You know, now you wrote about it. You know, you wrote about the mm -hmm. rapture. I, it's it, it's incredible. Uh, blast off for PMO, and I'll let you talk about that here in just a second. Um, it's it's just incredible. But what I really want to always remember is that just like there is a last play in football, there is that last individual to accept Jesus Christ before the rapture. Now, that person, that person and all of us that preceded him are going to meet Christ in the air, and we are spared yes. the tribulation. So the point here is don't be the person after the last person. Okay? Don't yeah. be... Don't be the first Christian saved after the rapture because you got to go through it. You got to go through those mm -hmm. days. Be mm -hmm. the people before. You know, so I can walk up to somebody and I say, Are you a Christian? Yes. Okay, well, you're not the last one. I can go up to somebody else and say, Are, are you a Christian? No. Okay, well, you might be the last one. Let me talk to you. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really how I address things, you know. So, mm -hmm. anyway, talking to uh, everybody that's not a Christian yet. Please, just pray a very, very simple prayer. Lord, I am a sinner. Please, in the name of Jesus Christ, forgive me of my sins. I know Jesus Christ died for me on the cross. I know he was in the tomb for three days. I know he rose from the grave. I know he ascended to sit at your right hand, Father. And I know he's coming back, and I promise you that I will follow you all the remainder, remaining days of my life. And pray that in Jesus' name, and you will find more peace than you have than you can even begin to understand. I promise mm -hmm. you. Amen. So, Terry, Amen. tell us a little bit about the eye of the storm. It looks like you got about a minute and a half today. Sorry I cut you short. Uh, Not a problem. Sunday nights, every Sunday night uh, at 7.30 Central Time in the evening there uh, on um, revelationradio.net, uh, you're going to be able to pick up uh, the eye of the storm from the eye of the storm uh, because we center on Jesus and on God and his work uh, in the midst of the storm and a hurricane. Uh, the the best place to be is in the center, in the eye, um, and that way you don't have to put up with all of the uh, terrible things that are happening uh, that are surrounding you Amen. and tearing everything up. 
So uh, if you get a chance, do that. Um, also, let me throw in, uh, as uh, Joel has already mentioned, Blast Off Rapiamore. You can Google T.L. Farley Books. That'll take you straight to it. Uh, Blast Off Rapiamore, and it'll give you an in-depth uh, understanding of what Scripture says about the rapture that we keep talking about. Uh, it will give you more more than you can chew on, uh, and it'll all be good. It will all be comforting. Uh, blast off for PMR again. Uh, T. L. Farley Books. Google that, and uh, and it will be a blessing for you. Hope to see you in the air uh, or at supper. There you go. <laughs> I'd also like to mention uh, that uh, the last Christian podcast is also available. Um, uh, every Wednesday night, and of course now that is at uh, seven thirty Central Time. Uh, you can find that at lastchristian.net, and I would love to have you there. Uh, the discussion there is, is going to it. It's always interesting, if nothing else. And I uh, sometimes I may get a little bit controversial, but that's okay. I think the world can handle it. The one thing that I'm not in favor of is cancel culture. I think, uh, you know, everybody's got a right to an opinion. And as far as I'm concerned, that's guaranteed under the United States Constitution. And if somebody doesn't like that, well, they're just going to have to get over it because I'm going to do it anyway. That's just how I am. So anyway, until uh, Tuesday night at 730 right here. And then also uh, Wednesday night at 730 at lastchristian.net. Please do join us. Uh, we look forward to talking to you. We'd love to hear from you. And everybody, I hope that you have a great Sunday. Find a good church. And until next time, for T.L. Farley, my name is J.D. Williams. Good night, and God bless you. Thanks again for joining us today for The Last Christian Radio Show, and be sure to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 7.30 to 8 p.m. Central Time right here on Revelation Radio. And don't forget to join us every Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Central for The Last Christian Podcast, now available on all major podcast platforms and at www.lastchristian.net. Until the trumpet sounds.